Aloha, I'm Wendy Lo, and I'm excited and so privileged to be journeying with you as we are taking your health back. Today, we are coming to you live from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii, which is located in downtown Honolulu, and from my home office in Makiki, Hawaii. I'd like to introduce to you Malushka Fraje from Paea Tahiti. E como mai, Malushka? Aloha, Wendy. And Aloha. like we say in Tahiti, uh, yaorana to everybody else watching. All right. So with that beautiful greeting, so tell us, you're coming to us live from Paea Tahiti. Please share a little bit about your home country. Well, uh, Tahiti is part of the French Polynesia Islands. So we have like 118 islands forming French Polynesia. And um, our first language is French. So English is not my first language, okay? So bear with me today. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm from the west coast of Tahiti. So from uh, the city of Paea. Wow. So now in a day-to-day -day, um, setting, are you speaking French or what are you speaking every day? We mostly speak French, yes, but we do speak Tahitian too. Uh, so in school, are you taught French as your dominant language or Tahitian? No, we are, uh, we are speaking French mostly in school, yeah. Everything is taught in French. Uh, and so how is uh, the language of Tahiti? Is it, um, is it practiced a lot? Or like here in Hawaii, the language was a dying language, and then they revived it, and more and more uh, are speaking Olelo Hawaiian. So now it's come to life again. How is it like in Tahiti with your language? Well, in, in Tahiti, we, we speak Tahitian at home, like with, with the grandparents mostly. And um, I would say it's, it's kind of difficult today for Tahiti itself. But when you go in the other islands, Tahitian is mostly used like first language. Mm. Yeah. But in Tahiti itself, it's, it's more French that we're speaking. Uh, do you feel that your language is going to be like a, going less and less with the younger generation and kind of um, fading out as it was here in Hawaii? Um, kind of, but then um, the government is doing things to like promote Tahitian language a little bit more. So it's starting to be taught at school, mm -hmm. like for, for the young ones, mm -hmm. yeah, as well as English. So, right. you know, like for the keikis, yes. they, they, they starting um, Tahitian in the, the little school, the little ones for the- Yeah, the grade the school, the preschools. Yeah. Preschool, um, yeah. So I think that's what was happening to here, uh, to us here in Hawaii, is that the language was a dying language. And so yeah. they recognize that problem as you guys are recognizing it as well. And now yeah. you're trying to promote before it becomes a dying language. You need yes. to resurrect it and um, yes. start getting it into the younger generation as a second language, if anything, but even up to the point where it's more used daily. And yes. it's a beautiful language, I'm sure. Oh so, yeah, just like Hawaiian. But then like yeah. I was telling you in the other island, it's not a problem at all. Everybody speaks the language. Wow. And then, you know, we have like Tahiti, we speak Tahitian. Then we have several um, um, other islands that have di different dialects. Yes. So like in the Marquesas, it's the different dialects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have different dialects and everybody speaks it in their island. Wow. How exciting. I mean, and for you guys, I mean, like here in Hawaii, we have English and then we have English and then we have English and then Hawaiian. But for you all, you have Thai, uh, French, and then you have English, and then you have Tahitian. Right? Um, at school, you mean? Well, yes, every day. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so you have three languages that you all have to master, and that's that's incredible. Yeah, that's well, it's got, well, actually, it's going to be uh, French, Tahitian, and then English. Oh, yeah. whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Very good. So let's get started. I know you have, um, like myself, you have two lovely daughters. So share with us a, a little bit about your ohana, your pride and your joy. Yeah, well, um, I was blessed with two beautiful and intelligent daughters. Yes. And funny thing, 
both of them have Hawaiian names. I saw that. <laughs> so my eldest name is Kahealani. Yes. And she's 26. And uh, my youngest one is Kavihi. Wow. Kavihi Onalani, actually. And she's she going to turn 21 this year. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. how did you come by giving them Hawaiian names? Um, I went to school in Hawaii. <laughs> Oh, you so did? I, I, oh, yes, I did. So I where went did, where to... Where did you go to school? I, actually, I went to a private school. Um, at that time, it was Cannons Business College. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, in um, uh, close to... Um, downtown? Downtown, yeah. Mm -hmm. And my I had Hawaiian friends, and they oh. named my daughters, yeah, my Very two daughters. Good. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. <laughs> wow. And so where are your daughters now? The youngest one. Uh, my youngest one is studying in Seoul, in Korea. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I wanted you to share with everyone. She's, and does she speak Korean? She speaks Korean a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, you know, she's still learning, but she's uh, doing well. So yeah, she speaks, the, she speaks French, a little bit of Tahitian. She speaks good English and she speaks Korean. I mean, when you told me that, I was like, whoa. And then I see her popping up all the time on TikTok. And <laughs> Boy, what a beautiful young woman she is. And, you know, um, she actually could pass for a Korean. She does. Yeah, she, does. she could yeah. because she's so fair and she has a little bit of a slant on her eye, a little bit. But the fair, the skin is fair and her just her mannerisms, I guess, because she's living there. But yes. wow, how exciting for you to be able to go up and visit with her in Korea. Yeah. Right? You must yeah. love it. I love it. And then we come to Hawaii to go to Korea. So. Yeah, so you got to go more often so we can see you back in Hawaii more often. <laughs> <laughs> so, Milushka, I know that you have a soulmate that inspires you daily. Please share with us a little bit about him. Well, um, his name is Jean-Paul, and uh, we've been together for 28 years. Wow. So we're not married, but I guess I guess we can say he's my soulmate because when you 28 years uh, together. Yes. Um, Jean-Paul is an entrepreneur. Um, yeah, a real self-made man. Wow. <laughs> but then, well, I, I think I helped shape the man. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you yeah. both play and work off of each other because you guys, um, I mean, you've been together 28 years and you have a great yeah. relationship. And I know you guys communicate well, you laugh at each other's jokes, and I can just see the spark in your eyes when I first met you both. So, wow, congratulations to JP and to yourself for having yeah. this soulmate um, um, re, uh, acquaintance and, and forever. Yeah. So, and because he's an entrepreneur, he kind of pushes me, you know, doing business and uh, yeah. But he, he started as a firefighter. Oh. Yeah, wow. so he was a yeah he 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 was a firefighter to start with, and then um, I think it's mostly my dad's influence, uh, kind of uh, pushing him to to uh, have his own business. So mm -hmm. at that time he was like twenty four hours at the firefighter department, yes, and had forty eight hours off. So for for those forty eight hours he was like starting doing business with the my dad behind him, pushing him. Oh, wow. What yeah, a great so, team. Yeah, so he started with constructions, and, um, and then he went into food industry, owning a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. and uh, yeah, he did a lot of things. Good. And, you know, he does look like a fireman. In fact, maybe <laughs> I saw him on one of those calendars for firemen. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, but Maybe. don't tell him that. Don't tell him that. It'll go straight to his head. But, <laughs> so I, I know, and I also see him on Facebook a lot. I see yes. on Facebook that JP is always promoting some delicious looking pastries. When did he start this bakery, this company? Oh, his um, bakery company is over 10 years now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> What's it over called? Over 10 years. JP's Bakery. He oh. started... Yeah, he started his bakery. Uh, the name was JP Donuts. Uh -huh. And then he just uh, changed his name this year. Just oh. after, yeah, just after COVID. So he decided to change the name to JP's Bakery because he's right. doing more, more thing than just donuts. So he was like making donuts 
um, cookies, um, uh, muffins, you know, wow. well, mostly American bakery style. Oh, I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you if, um, if you took after the French patisseries or is it more Western style? No, it's more American style, you know, like uh, uh, Polynesian, especially Tahitian, they mm -hmm. love everything that comes from the U.S. Oh, wow. So, so at the time we saw people coming back from uh, a vacation in the U.S., they were bringing donuts for their whole family. That's right. how he started his business. So he was like, okay, there's something to do there because everybody was just Brilliant. bringing back yeah, donuts. Brilliant. And, you know, I, I, I do remember because when I first started seeing it, I thought it was JP Donuts and then it's now JP Bakery. And, you know, it's amazing that the name JP Bakery would be still available to, to use and to register because I would think John Paul or JP would be a, a common acronym for a, a, a business, but it was yeah. available after all these years. Yes, it was. <laughs> wow. So can you just share with us um, how was it? In, how did he survive in the last two years? Was it tough? Was it easy? How was it for you? I think it, I think it was tough for most businesses. Uh, you know, in Tahiti, we had a lockdown and like for one month, uh, nobody could go out of their house except for uh, some shopping and then they just have to come home. Right. So um, he, his, his bakery is delivering uh, about 41 uh, grocery stores around the islands. Wow. But then, yeah, but then uh, during COVID, they changed the rules. Everything had to be packed differently. And um, because people couldn't go out that much to buy food, like it's not every day that they were um, authorized to go out. Right. So he had to um, be creative, you know? So he, right. he started um, delivering from door to door. So, oh, brilliant. Yeah, he was so, delivering to, to their, their own house. So he was allowed, he was considered essential that he could be on the road to deliver? Yes, yes. Well, he had to, to um, register and have like paperwork done so for him to be able to deliver. But yeah, that's how, that's how we, we survived the crisis. Wow, so you still had people coming to the shop to bake? and pack and then you had delivery yes. people to go out yes and so these orders were taken by text by website or how did you get the orders um mostly by um social media mm -hmm. yeah and some by phone so the whole family was um um helping out with all the orders coming in because we had to you know answer okay we well noted and okay it's going to be delivered between this hours and this hour you know right. so right yeah well how exciting that you guys were being creative enough to survive the last two years and was business even better or did it get less for you do you think uh during covid it was um not better but we managed to, you know, stay. We managed to survive. Yeah, to survive. But ah. then um, afterwards, uh, like right now, uh, it's it's coming back. So yes. yeah. Wow. Amen. Uh, and it's it, it's. I think it's even getting better <clears throat> nowadays because he had to hire two more people. Wow. Congratulations yeah. to you and to Jean Paul. <laughs> so um, that and whoever could make it to, to the last through the last two years, I just want to commend them for their creativity, their perseverance, and not giving up. And so, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank when you. I come to Tahiti, I want to eat those donuts and those pastries. Okay. All oh right? yes. All right. Oh yes. <laughs> and so, Milishka, when I met you a few years ago, I know that you were really concerned about health. So. Please share a little about what brought you into this path. Uh, well, actually, you know, um, Jean-Paul is, is a real, um, I would say, he, he, he's not only inspiring, he's he also a real leader. So he took me to a, a Tony Robbins seminar. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and there I learned a lot about health because they talk a lot about health. And he thought that 
after that, I would come out and go, okay, I'm going to do my own business and quit my job and just do my own business. But no, I came out of that seminar. I was like, uh, oh, you know what? I'm going to be a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I just registered for another seminar and I met uh, another inspiring woman. Her name is Lauren, Lauren Lahau. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, she was in charge of the seminar. And I've learned so much about, you know, health and, and how um, everything that we put into our mouth is so important. Um, things that we're supposed to know, it's, it's common sense, but we kind of forget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, it had a real impact on me. And, and I was like, okay, I'm going to go back home and just change the world, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, just yeah. talk to people about what we are doing wrong because everything, it's our choice what we put into our mouth. And, mm -hmm. and so um, health depends on what we put in our mouth. So we need to, I, 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 I came out to that conclusion that we needed to eat more fruits and vegetables. Yeah. But, you know, um, at that time, I didn't know that um, you cannot change the word if the word doesn't want to change. <laughs> For sure. You yeah, know, so it, I had to start by myself yes. and try to be an example. Yeah. You know, the saying, your mama is right, you know, so your mama always told you to eat your vegetables and your fruits. We just didn't <laughs> listen because it was yeah. mommy telling us, right? And she told yeah. us all these things, but we just go in one year, go out the other year, and yeah. that's it. And then we live our lives on fast food, convenience food, and um, who knows what happened to our bodies. And so it was good that John Paul took you to this Tony Robbins uh, event, <laughs> and they spoke on health, and good. You came yeah. out a successful winner because um, I'm sure that's a, it led you to this path that you're on now, and um, that you're eating healthy. And yes, you became more vegetarian-like, eating plants strong. So what, what else did you do to try to inspire people to take their health back? Um, well, after that seminar, finally, I had in mind that maybe I should open a business. So I opened a health center, mm -hmm. a wealth center, and um, I was doing colon hydrotherapy, you know, to clean the colon. <laughs> yes, so but important. I, yeah, and I guess it was too early and people were not ready for it mm -hmm. at that time. Then in 2020, I had to, to close the center. Mm -hmm. But then um, my, my dad got sick in um, 2000, uh, 2016. He passed away oh. from cancer. And at that time, I realized that if I knew before how important it was to eat more fruits and vegetables. Maybe I could have helped him more, you know, but it was too late for him. Yes. Yes. Yeah, but then um, I went to a boot camp in 2018 with uh, Lauren again, and, um, <laughs> and I find out Tower Gardens over there. You know, it was uh, um, exposed in the hall, Mm -hmm. And they had a lottery to win that tower garden. And I was so impressed about that, that I was like, okay, I want that thing. So I bought one ticket <laughs> and I won the ticket. Yay! <laughs> I won the tower garden. <laughs> but then it was kind of too um, complicated to bring it back to Tahiti at that time. Yes. And, um, and uh, mm -hmm. so... I gave it away to, for charity, but it was always in my mind. I went back to Tahiti and I was like, I want that thing. I, I need to <laughs> take that thing back to Tahiti. Yes. Why? Yes. Because why? It, why did you give it why? away? <laughs> because it's so easy to grow vegetables yes. on it. And yeah. I want it for myself, you know, for, for I was me first. So <laughs> Uh, I wanted to, to have tower gardens for myself to grow more vegetables right. for us to eat in Tahiti. And um, may, I, I was thinking that it, it would be another way to impact on people. 
Right. 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 Oh. right. And so what, now that, you know, you got Tower Gardens to, uh, to Tahiti, so what was the impact of your Tower Gardens in Tahiti? <laughs> so I started with three Tower Gardens, like I said, for myself. So I had a lot of kale on one of my tower and um, tomatoes on another one and other vegetables on an, another tower. And I was so proud of what I was harvesting that I was posting picture on uh, social media. So I had a lot of people uh, commenting back, being really interested. And that's how I, I found out that finally people were ready. You know, they, they, they start thinking about health first because a lot of people were like asking how they could get towers how interested they were to to harvest their own food, you know. Uh, as in Tahiti, we depend a lot of imports. Yes. Yes, it's like mostly 80% of food is imported. And, you know, with COVID, it has an impact too. So everybody was like going back to uh, um, doing their own garden. Yes. And we had a solution for something uh, easier. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, less work, you know, and can grow on your on your um, lanai or you know. Yeah. So, wow. So I need to ask you, what is the basic vegetable diet of the Tahitians? Um, basic vegetable diet, um, like for local food, we will go with like taro <clears throat> stuff like that. But then uh, it's mostly gonna be lettuce mm. you know lettuce and everything that is like um um cabbage cabbages mm. chinese cabbage mm -hmm. yeah i see and so like you were saying they the Ta people of tahiti lean towards the western diet so if you bring in some great salads and salad greens that's what yes. we eat in america so that's where they probably want to lean towards is that correct um I think it's mostly because they starting um, understanding that they need to eat more vegetables, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the easiest thing to grow is lettuce yes. and, and Chinese cabbage. Yes. Um, but um, <clears throat> even, you know, even lettuce, not too long ago, uh, it was out of stock in stores oh. in Tahiti. And I had mine on my towers, so I was so proud. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And you know, yeah. you were saying that you did a high hydro, what? Um, hydro uh, colonic, well, colonics, colon they call that. Yeah, there. colonics. You know, that was the business you started and then you closed it. But when you think of it, the tower garden business is the same business. When yep. you eat more vegetables, you flush out, you clean out. Yep. So yes, you're in the right you. direction. You just yep. change the vehicle to get the people healthier. Yeah, so it's a cleansing. It's a process of cleansing and flushing with all the greens that you're going to grow. Plus, there, I'm sure you're growing growing non-GMO seeds. You're using no pesticides. They're consuming more. It's fresh, like minutes old, and then you, they eat it. So then, when they consume more of this, their bodies are healthier and flushing and just continuing to do exactly what you intended to do with that other business. Is that yes, correct? exactly. Yes. Yeah. So you're on track, girl. You're on track. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And so you're going to continue to grow more lettuces and Chinese cabbage. And what do you guys do with the Chinese cabbage there? Uh, well, we saute them with garlic. Okay. Yeah. But um, the vegetable I'm I'm uh, more interested in is kale. Yes. Yes. Because I juice a lot. So, uh, and um, kale is not really available in Tahiti. It's imported for most, yes. of, most of the time. And it's really expensive. Um, so we were growing a lot of kale. Um, mm. And, but it's not well known yet in Tahiti. Yeah. It's yeah. So, so we started like, juicing and showing people on uh, on social media our green juices 
Yes. So they will they will ask you ask us what's inside. So we say kale. Yep. <laughs> and then we kale. show them. Yeah. We we show them that we have a kale plantation. <clears throat> right. So, and you know, um, here in Hawaii, we do a lot of kalua pig or kalua pig cabbage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we saute the cabbage. I mean the kalua pig, and then we add in the the head cabbage. Right. Yeah. You that? So what we've done now is we use kalua pig and we use kale. Ooh. right so it's a little bit better than just cabbages there's nothing not a whole lot of nutrients in the cabbage but when you're going to use kalua pig which is the naughty part but you know they need flavor so you use a little bit of kalua pig and a lot of kale and you stir fry delicious yeah right? and we just add kale to all our soups and it doesn't melt as fast as as fast as spinach does but kale is the the number one super, yeah. yeah the number one superfood and also you know your chinese cabbage if you can grow a lot of bok choy or chinese cabbage um you can make kimchi Ooh. <laughs> right you use that for kimchi and then you're getting them to you you grow the cabbage so now it's organic or chemical free um bok choy one one bok one bok and you make kimchi so now it's a probiotic yeah right so that's exactly what we need in our everyday diet is more probiotics and a healthier version of it as well. So, so you, you're, you're good, girl. Yeah, it's another another reason <clears throat> to go to um, Korea then and learn how to make yeah. kimchi. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Your daughter should uh, really get hot on that because that is life-saving food is the, bak, the wong bok oh, for kimchi. The probiotic, yeah. yeah. So tell me now, how are you trying to promote vegetable growing with the Tower Gardens in Tahiti? What is your ultimate goal for growing? Um, well, actually, we are we are trying to um, um, uh, have the the authority, the government, the mayor of, of each city to come and visit our farm. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, explaining the the how how it works and how easier it is and how simple it is and how we can uh, save uh, energy and uh, and time and water with this yes. system, yes, and wow. have you know food that that it's ready to be eaten yes. because of chemicals, right? So right. even better for the health. Wow. And uh, yeah, and then. Um, we try to promote that for schools as well. Exactly. So wow. we're just going a little at a time. One step so. at a time. One step, yeah, no, one step at a time. It, yeah. You're doing it without sometimes knowing what you're doing. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. So <laughs> yeah. blessings on you. Um, Malushka, Malushka, we are running out of time for today. But I would like to say mahalo to you and towards your heart. That's taking Tahiti's health back as you grow Tahiti towards sustainability. I'm Wendy Lowe. We'll be back in two weeks and we'll see you all there. Mahalo, Milushka. Mahalo, Wendy. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.